Hi everybody, good day to you. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whichever of those applies to you at this current point in time. This is a 2011 Doge Ramicus pick'em up truck, 1500. 141,756 miles on the odometer. Customer states, Carolina Squad. No, I'm not kidding. Oh, copyright. The goal here today is to install a leveling kit on this truck. Uh, what we're gonna do is raise the front end up about two inches or so, and that's gonna level it out with the rear. That way it doesn't have a forward facing rake. And that should give us a smoother look. We're going to achieve this front end lift with some replacement strut assemblies. Uh, I believe it's gonna come with a new strut, which is like the shock absorber cartridge, uh, new spring, and a uh, new strut mount. So we're gonna pull the old units out, put the new units in, and then see what kind of a uh, ride height difference we have achieved. Do -do -do -do. First one of the day. By the way, do you guys remember this Ramicus? It's the one that has the horn. Yeah. That one. I actually installed the air horn on this truck not long ago. And I made a video about that. If you would like to see my video about the air horn installation, please check for the link in this video's description down below. That's a tight squeeze. Parking's the auto. Powering down. Doge moving up. I guess first we should introduce the goods here so we know what we're doing. Whoa, strap breakage. Let's try the same thing again. Expecting different results. Ooh, shiny. Yeah, what are these rough countries? They've got the mount, which is the bearing plate, the cartridge, the spring. Yeah, these are nice. You know, we actually are ahead of ourselves again. I want to measure the ride height of these wheel wells before and after to see if we actually get a two inch lift, more or less. So uh, let me let this back down real quick. Love my job so much, uh, do it twice. Here, let's just see what we have at the wheel well arches. We are on the right front, looks like just shy of 37 inches. The right rear, that's giving us just over 39, 39 and a quarter. Left rear, uh, rust. And left front. What do we got here? Just under 37. So it's fairly level in the front. So let's see what kind of difference we get off of a 36 and 7 eighths. Okay, we're in the left front wheel well. Wheels off, obviously. And uh, what we're doing here is we're pulling this strut assembly out. And we're replacing it with that strut assembly, which is, I think, longer. And it's got a bigger spring, which is going to translate to a little bit more ride height out of the front of this truck. So that is our, our goal here, that's the end game. We're gonna get through this as uh, smoothly as possible and uh, then we'll do a wheel alignment of course. I think I'm gonna order some sway bar links for this as well because these bushings are squishy and gross and I think I have to pull these off anyway to get clearance to, uh, to get this out. So let's get started. Um, what to do, I think I'll pull the tie rods off first, that way I've got a good path to extract this unit from. We'll disconnect it here, see if we can't pry it down enough to get the strut out, and then we'll unbolt it from the top. That's the game plan. Let's get started. All right, we're starting with the tie rod. Well, that was nice, but also not nice. The shaft came out before the nut came off. No worries. More pry bar. Seriously, that's the answer. We pry bar this uh, ball joint down, it'll put pressure on the shaft. And then the nut comes off. I'm gonna pull 
pull this sway bar link next because we are getting new ones. Alright, sway bar, are you gonna fight me? What's up? Sure is. I know. I'll use my Nipex pliers to hold the shaft. Are you yelling at me? Yeah. I cannot be summoned like some dog. Wrong socket? What? Yeah. Messed that up, didn't I? yelling at me. What? Moog? Yeah, Moog is good. I like Moog. Twice what he said. Oh. Moog's good. I mean, well, Moog used to be. I don't know. They used to be good. I think they're still good. I don't have any problems with Moog stuff. Actually, I'll rephrase that. I do have one slight issue uh, with Moog, and that is that they are—they offer different tiered of a tiers of a product line. See, back in the day, it used to be the Moog part was the Primo part, and that was—that's what they made. But now they have like like good, better, best parts, which I think is—I think it subtracts away from their brand. Just like rust is subtracting away from my ability to get this bolt out. And that's probably because this car did a tour of duty up north once. Serious? Hmm, manual reversing action? made a clicky sound I ran um all right more leverage I'm getting a jack handle to make this longer here let's switch out to a breaker bar so if I break anything I break my breaker bar instead of breaking my ratchet why wow that was Crunchy, crusty, I felt it. Oh, what was that? Tire. Yes. Frustrated gravity. That's not good. The bolt is rusted to the bushing and uh, the bushing is turning. It's not good at all. You are paying the price for having this truck up north at one point. Yeah, I bought it from up there. Yeah, <laughs> see that bolt right there? Yeah. Well, that bolt runs through the bushing inside of this control arm right here, sure. and this bolt is rusted to the metal part, which is the insert inside of that bushing. What do I need to order? Uh, so I need to, I can't get the bolt to come out. Just because the bushing and it, the bolts are now one, and the control arm and the bushing are no longer one. So if, if I turn this, it just turns the bushing. It actually broke the bushing free from the control arm, from the, from the metal piece right here. Okay, what do so we need? You need? We need control arms. Thank you. Yeah, two of them. Two of them. You're going to need two of them. Um, get, got way more I need you to get the bolts. You got to get the bolts and the control arm, because I, I probably have to cut that off. All right, with torch. Yeah, so I have to stop now. Uh, I've got he walked away while I was talking to him. <laughs> what? So I even tried to kind of hit that with the hammer a little bit, thinking maybe I could break it loose, and it ended up just pulling the rubber bushing out. Uh, we called Dodge to uh, try to get a set of bolts, because I figure I can just cut these off with a torch, cut that off with a torch, and then uh, we can replace the control arm uh, because, of the, because of the damaged bushings. 
However, that's not going to work either because I'm not going to be able to get this control arm out without cutting off these bolts as well. These are uh, adjustment cams that run through the control arm. They bolt it to the K member here and uh, it appears that these have suffered the same fate as, uh, as the strut bolt right here because I cannot get this thing to turn. It's not going to happen. These are also rusted in to the inner steel liners of the bushings on these lower control arms. So this is escalating very quickly. I'm going to have to torch this off, torch that off, torch this off, torch that off, just to remove the lower control arm. So we're going to find replacements for this bolt, this bolt, that bolt, and you can bet money it's going to be the same situation on that side over there. So uh, our two inch doodly doodly do leveling kit has just turned into a two month nightmare because we called Dodge to source the bolts and uh, we found out that they are 45 days doodly do back order. So we won't be able to get these for nearly two months. Now 45 days, get the phone! <laughs> now 45 days translated into auto parts delivery is like three months. Uh, so um, I can't do anything with this car right now. Uh, we did order the control arms. We ended up ordering the lowers because I knew we were going to need them. We have the struts and uh, just based on how far deep we're going into this, we also ordered some uppers. I have the uppers. That's not even what we need. That was like a hey while we're here and since we're effectively rebuilding this, let's just throw our uppers in it too just because of mileage. But that doesn't solve our problem and being able to change these uppers doesn't really get us anywhere other than we have a lower parts count. Uh, so that being said, the only thing that I'm going to be able to do is replace the uppers today. So I'm going to throw the uppers in there just because they're here and I've got nothing else to do. And then uh, we'll tackle the rest of this later on whenever we can get new bolts. This is, this is going to be long term and uh, it's going to be frustrating, but I'm going to get it right. So I know that was a very long-winded explanation as to why this video is ruined and yet it is not ruined at the same time because we still have something to do. Well, so let's just start by tightening up this control arm bolt again. Nut. And uh, I guess I'll pull these upper control arms off and we'll change those. It's not going to get us near our goal in any way, but like I said, it's something to do. Got to salvage the day. Now, and I know what you're thinking, just call Fastenal and go get some bolts. Um, I won't do that. Uh, people's lives are in your hands here and you're not going to find this from Fastenal. So why try to fasten all this? I'm just, I'm not interested in, in trying to cobble that together. Uh, I, we, I've got to use the factory parts or uh, I would just, I can't do the job. There's too much liability in such things. So for all the fasten all guys out there saying just go to Home Depot or go to fasten all, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. You can do that on yours, but I'm not going to do it. Okay, so moving on, uh, like I said, I, I do have some parts here for this and ultimately they are going to go on. I know those control arms don't solve our problem, but since they're here and since it's half a part, I'm just going to go ahead and change them right now. That is my salvage operation for the day. That was easy. Okay. Let's uh, pluck this little line out of the way so I can get to that control arm bolt and put that back later. All right, extra long reach ratcheting wrench to the rescue. Say that five times fast. Check it out, it's a finger chopping off bolt. People will grab this area and hit the nut or hit the bolt with a uh, like an impact. This guy spins around and puts a hole in your finger. It's quite uncomfortable. Okay, one down, one to go. Yeah, see that guy spinning around? Those will reach out and bite you. 
Oh, by the way, center position is uh, right here. You guys remember that, okay? Because when I put the new one on, I'm going to put it back in that same spot. Annoying noises. Cut. Oh wow, I say annoying noises and then the phone starts to ring. There we go. Freedom is near. new one coming in I've matched it with the uh, the old one and dimensionally it is quite similar I dare not say identical but it's uh, similar enough identical is too absolute plus this one has the addition of this little ball right here Can you see it that thing that's for linkage to attach to on the model that would have something like uh, auto ride control or ride height sensing this would attach to a sensor right here and as the suspension moves it'll change the position of that sensor telling the ECU that hey I'm I'm loaded down or hey I'm not the wheels too high my wheels too low etc you get the point so that's not the same because the other one doesn't have that that's the point there we go now you get it Rambling, nonsensical rambling. It's because I'm bored, that's why I'm rambling. If I don't give my brain something to do, it, well, it just does whatever it wants. Ah, uh, look at that, you see how it did that? How she flung around so dangerously? Here, I'll demonstrate again. Watch right here. Finger chop. This goes right here. Click. Must be on the wrong setting. More steam. Click. Look at this. They gave us balls that we didn't need on the other side and made me reuse this plastic thing on this side. That's. I'd rather have the plastic thing than. An extra set of balls. That didn't come out right. You, you know what I meant. You guys know what I meant. It's okay. All right, fast forwarding a little bit. So we're tight, we're tight, we're tight. Those are tight. I put the uh, tie rod back on. I put the nut back on for the strut bolt. I have not done anything with the sway bar link yet. I need to check and see if there's new ones here because if there are, I'll change those today too. Ooh, we need lumens here really dark. Okay, passenger side, repeat. Don't give me problems.
There was no backing out of that one. Hot. Woo, hot, yep. Okay, so this ball joint did not come loose like the driver's side did. So uh, we must encourage it ever so slightly. I said ever so slightly. That's what I meant. Stay. Connect your own and click. Break this thing loose. Oh yeah, that's getting a 90 degree impact any second now. As soon as my finger cutter off her nut moves on through. Contacts the frame. There we go. Now, now we just shove this guy right in there. Ring, got it. There we go. Now it's loose. Is this thing gonna fit? Yep. reversing procedure go in Yes, sir. Get in there. Can you use brake clean on a carpet? No. Yes. Huh? Yes. Let's put it into our one. Yeah, you can't. Yes. That's. Oh. Oh, hang on. Do you want the answer? Or do you want the answer that you want? No, it's fine. I have. I have some carpet cleaner. Hang on. Let's see right here. I gotta set the height of this. That's too high. Okay, that's where I need the ball joint to point. However, we have to set this up at its level position here. That's where it was when I dug it out. And that's where it's gonna go. And that's where it's gonna go when I tighten it down. Just pressure wash it. We should hire a detail person. Wrong angle on my dangle tool here. Hang on. Let's try this again. See, there's stuff in the way. Oh. Let's try. Let's 
tiger type. Okay, let's pull this sway bar link off and then we'll put the two replacements on. Turn this out of the way, there we go. Impact gun attack. Warm. Nipex to the rescue. Knipex. However they say it. Now remember the driver's side is already disconnected. So all we're gonna do here is hinge this whole bar up if it's gonna go. Maybe it's not. Yeah, there we go. Pry bar. Now we'll extract our link. Now we can place in our replacement link. There we go. And we'll go to the other side and repeat. Okay, driver side. Link out. Uh, there we go and link in. Let's line it up, shaft with the hole. Hopefully that's good. And then pry bar. Not right. Let's check the other side. Almost. A little bit more right there. There we go. Back to the other side again and down. There we go. Good. One more bushing. We got our new nut. And then down below, we got another new nut. Not gravity. Got it. I got it. Tried to evade me. And it doesn't want to thread. No. Got it. Gentlemen, we have uh, two more fasteners to go. Well, correction, two more fasteners for now and for today. Do -do -do. So, all that is left for me to do is to tighten these little guys down. Easy enough. Oh, I lied. Give it back. Why did you do that? Pinching it is the angle. Yeah, let's just. Well, let's. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I can hold it up here. Let's see if this is gonna work. Click. Yes, it's gonna work. Anyway, as I was saying before, I got distracted with myself. Let's gonna go ahead and close this video out. As always, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know the drill. Let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. If you did not enjoy this video, I am dreadfully sorry for wasting your time. And I hope I can do a better job at entertaining you next time. So again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Okay, so I thought this would be fun. Behind the scenes flashlight reveal. 
I can see clearly now because the shade is gone. I mean, seriously, this is ridiculous. There's more light in here than there is like out here. I swear, it's wild. Okay, I'm gonna go now. See you guys later.